we're doing something a little bit different today. It is time to change things up and we're talking about something that is a little bit more dramatic and will entertain you for the next two episodes. Today we're talking about the infamous Gucci family. Uh, okay, honestly, when I first started the research for this episode, I was kind of like, I don't really know. This is gonna be turn out, you know, something that's a little bit boring um, and not as interesting as the movies, but it's juicy. You're in for the ride for this week and next week. So let's do this, shall we? Let's start. I'm gonna start off by saying, that there are a lot of moving parts and there are a lot of people so try to keep up this is the murder of Maurizio Gucci I know I butchered the pronunciation but leave me alone on that because I don't really know what I'm doing but my point is this is actually what the movie House of Gucci is based off of the one that Lady Gaga was in um, and a couple other people that I'm forgetting but apparently it was a good movie I, I heard that people from the actual Gucci family were kind of like it, it was kind of just like weird and they didn't really like it and I don't know I, I either got banned or like they were getting sued I don't really know what was happening there but that is what this movie is based off of and that movie came out 2021 2020 I think something like that it's wild and it's gonna be two parts and I have a feeling that I might leave you with a cliffhanger so come back next week and listen to the entire thing because it's one hell of a story. Here's a restart. We start off with the founder of the Gucci brand and his, get this, his name is Guccio Gucci. And you probably, when you think, oh, old money and like probably grew up in a rich household where he had the means to start his own company, wrong. He was actually not very rich when he grew, uh, when he first started. He came from a not really, not so well off family. Florence, Italy is where he's from. Florence, Italy. Basically, he moves from Florence to go to the UK to look for work. And he starts working at this restaurant called the Savoy, which is like a five-star restaurant. And he's like the bellboy, I believe. And he was like, this is where for him it started of like this whole like all like this rich people persona and like oh my god like so cool he was basically just uh, like shocked at how rich these customers were because he was working at this five-star restaurant and it was like you only really see like classy people there people that can afford the food and he was just like kind of very mesmerized by it because he he's never seen anything like that in his entire life so that was like his first glimpse of wealth so he goes to UK and then he moves back to Florence and he meets this woman called Ada Cavelli. I think she was 24 at the time. They get married after one year of dating and they have one daughter, Grimalda. I believe that Grimalda is Guccio's daughter, um, the first daughter and the only daughter that he'll ever have. This kind of comes into importance later. So he moves back to Florence and he starts working at the leather firms, basically learning how do you work with leather, how do you use it, how do you find high quality leather. At this point he's like, you know what, I think I have enough experience, I want my own shop. He buys this like little area in Florence, very mediocre, but for him it was the ideal place. So. He first starts working on like these really nice like leather pieces. Leather at that time, right, was only seen as something that like very high class and like rich people wear. It, it was just part of this like upper class fashion. Very, He had very good taste and he was automatically part of this like niche and he just, his taste was very tailored towards that. He was really good at catching this those kind of people's eye. He had four kids. And they were raised very strictly and distantly. He wasn't he wasn't a very like family type person, like, oh family is this, family is that. He was very like, no, they're like a set of rules that they need to follow. Because I think in his mind he was like gonna build this thing and his kids needed to help him and be proud of what he built. And it was very like military, not like exactly military style, but it was very strict. Eventually, slowly, some of his kids end up getting interested into the business. So let's talk about them in order. Number one, we have Ugo. Ugo. I, I, I swear to God, I 
I'm trying to pronounce them right. Okay, so he is the son that Ada had before she met Guccio. So basically, it's Guccio's stepson. And he's kind of, he's he's very distant from this. Um, he stays away from the family business. He worked for a really successful uh, re real estate mogul, which comes into play later and he's making a lot of money he's working for a really successful man and he looks look like he's really really good at his job but here's the thing that's a lie he was lying that wasn't real but because he was telling this to his family when Gucci was start first starting his store he was like yo Ugo like can you like loan me some money so I can start my shop and Ugo was like, oh yeah, like sure. And he stole from his boss, okay? And here's a second twist. That boss was Guccio's friend. So he stole from his stepfather's friend, like money to give to his father. And then when everything came full circle and Guccio was like, hello. And then, yeah, it was like really awkward. And then he had to return all the money that he borrowed to start his shop. So that's Ugo for you. Not very interested, but maybe he's kind of like a scammer and a liar. Then we have Grimalda. So their first daughter and their only daughter. So she becomes important later. What happens eventually is like her fiance loans a lot of money to Guccio to start his, his store. And that becomes like a whole point of contention later, which we'll talk about. And it gets very interesting. So... Guccio, basically, he opens his workshop, like his own little workshop next to his leather shop because he wanted to start making his own leather and his own, his own pieces. So he hired a bunch of craftsmen. His reputation starts growing amongst the rich because again, like I said, his taste was very tailored to upper class fashion. When he was working in the UK, he got a taste of what that was like. And he was so fascinated. I guess it was just kind of in his own blood and he kind of really got a feel for it. And he, he fell in love with it so much that when he came back home, he's like, this is what I want to do. And he was really, really good at it. People started to get to know him. His name was becoming very well known he was known to be like reliable and in his workshop that he had next to his like his other shop was he used to like repair pieces so instead of and being rich like something happens to you, like a bag that you have and you go and buy a new one you would kind of just give it to Guccio and he would repair it that's like what set him apart from other stores was that like at the time other stores um hired workers and taught them how to stitch so they didn't really have a lot of creative freedom but Guccio was different he hired artisans and gave them that creative aspect and kind of let them like go into what do they think will look good on this bag, this purse, whatever, right? They were very, very high quality. And here's the thing, because he was doing so well, even though I think he had around 60 full-time craftsmen, I think a little bit more than that, they were doing really well, but he, his shop was doing so well that it just wasn't enough and they were working over time. And the relationship between him and his workers comes into play later too and it becomes a really interesting dynamic. Now, let's talk about how his kids are helping him. Um, he's growing very, very fast. His kids become a big part of his company growing. We talked about Grimalda and we talked about Ugo. Ugo never really comes back into the story, I believe, but Grimalda and her fiancé come back. So now we're going to talk about Aldo. Aldo becomes a very, very big part in managing the company, like, when he's, like, a full-blown adult. So he basically starts off by, and when I said, like, oh, like, the distant parenting, and not very like you know like mushy I guess he made sure that like his kids they weren't nepo babies if you know what I mean like he made his kids start from the ground up meaning Aldo started at delivering orders sweeping floors and he literally worked his way up just because his dad owned the company didn't mean that he got a free ticket to like a really high position and I think I guess it, it you know it, it benefited because Aldo eventually ends up caring a, a lot about the company and he has like this like feeling for it like Guccio did and he is an interesting character apart from the fact that he really loved the company he is like I'm just gonna jump to it he marries the servant of the princess of Greece okay <laughs> basically what happened was he's like very Aldo was bringing a lot of traffic to the store because he was known to be very attractive very good looking 
So he was bringing a lot of attention to the store and he would like flirt with the woman and they would come just to him, uh, come to the store just for him and be like, oh my God, let's buy a bag because he's here. So he was bringing a lot of business. And like that, I guess being the little F boy that he is, he somehow got into ties with a servant of the princess of Greece. And at one point that princess came up to Guccio and she was like, you need to tell your son to stop sleeping around with my servant. And Gucci was like, I, like, what What are you talking about? Like, that That didn't happen. I don't know. Where did he find the hello? And then he calls Aldo over. And Aldo's like, oh, yeah. Like, um, yeah, I'm sleeping with her. And it became like this whole thing. And they ended up getting married. And there's speculation that they ended up getting married because she was already pregnant. And at that point, like, getting pregnant out of wedlock. And it's just not really great. And so they got married. Um, they have a lot of kids. And um, that becomes a huge thing later. His grandkids so that's aldo becomes a really big player in like the main plot of the story next we have bosco i don't know if it's that i'm guessing it's bosco because i don't want to say vasco that seems too white so we're just gonna go with bosco he wasn't as invested but when he was part of the company uh he was in charge of production of the leather goods he had kind of a top position but he wasn't very like aldo where it was like oh my god like i'm gonna pour my heart and soul into this company so that was bosco grimalda worked behind the counter so she was also like very entry-level job and now we have another very important player Rodolfo. he was the youngest very interesting character he was never really part of the company like oh my god i love this company so much and it's part of my family and blah blah blah, blah right um no this guy wanted to be part of the silent movie industry i'm just gonna yeah okay and so when he told his dad yeah gucci was not having it he was very like no shut up and just like fa like family business hello what do you mean silent movie industry but he somehow gets linked up with an italian director and he's starring in a bunch of like comedy silent films and i think at the time a lot of people said like oh he's like the next charlie chaplin like that's how good he was and very very talented then he meets this girl named alessandra i think um winklehausen and because they were like starring co-starring on the show together they met and i guess it worked out and they ended up having a kid who is the main subject of our story today Maurizio Gucci. They have their kid Maurizio, but we're gonna come back to him later because he is the murder victim of today's story. Uh, back to Rodolfo. At this time, like, as he's having his kid, the company, so the Gucci name and the company are growing. And I think at, at that point, it was like spanning across Italy, Europe, um, eventually the United States. Aldo was very invested. He came up with these great expansion ideas and Gucci really supported him so Aldo would kind of be like oh I have this idea but I need money and Gucci would be like you're not getting the money from me like go find somebody else like with what money you know he was a very he was a type to be like um Aldo would be like oh I have this idea but I need money to implement it and Gucci would stick his hand in his pocket pull out a wad of literally nothing and be like with what money with what money and I, I don't know I feel like that's just really funny and so Aldo would then go to banks and be like hey I have this business like I'm expecting Expanding my business, I need money, like I need a loan. But the funny thing is that Gucci would then go to those same banks and be like, no, yeah, like my son knows what he's doing, please give him the money. So it's really interesting how that dynamic worked. Like he was supporting Aldo, but like not directly. And this is how that relationship went for a very long time. Gucci was right, Aldo was a genius. And his expansion ideas really, really worked. They opened a shop in Rome and that really popped off for them. As this is happening, Rodolfo comes back and he's like, so now they're making movies where like people talk and that's not really my thing. So can I have a job please? And I don't know, that's like the juxtaposition of that is just hilarious. Honestly, he was like, uh, I don't really want to talk. And so he comes back and he's like, hey, I am looking for a stable job. Can you help me out? And family business, you know? So he gets hired at the stores where they're basically recently expanding and he is also very hot so he gets he could become like this big asset to like the company and he gets to, sent to the stores where um he 
can bring a lot of customers so i think he ends up getting sent to a milan store and like to to manage that location and okay let me tell you something at that time Cuccio was like something else so this is where like the whole relationship with his workers comes into play so as they were expanding the one thing Cuccio hated doing was hiring managers because apparently then he wouldn't get that like one-to-one -one feeling with his um like his artisans and and, and and his people so he never hired managers he did everything himself and the funny thing about this is like he was very very close to his workers he knew all of them he knew their family members he knew what was going on with their lives and he'd be like like oh hey john like how's your wife doing i heard he she, you know she was having some um like health issues is she okay like how is she doing now so he was very personable with his employees but he never hired managers because he wanted it to stay like that but it was very like they weren't getting paid or something so they had this like love-hate relationship it was very interesting the company is expanding Aldo so they had that relationship where Aldo would go to the banks and Gucci would then go to the bank and be like oh yeah like my son he's great um please give him money so we can keep expanding and Aldo's main goal was basically make the brand more exclusive and high class because he figured out that how we become a big big brand and rack up a lot of money so his genius idea was let's attach the brand name to things that just spark the idea of like wealth and class and money so let me let me throw into something really quick when somebody says oh, like horseback riders or like saddles and stuff what do you think about money people who are in like country clubs just very like rich people money harboring people right okay i don't know if this is still around but it is said that gucci was known for making saddles for horseback riders but let me tell you something that it's not true that no that never happened they never did that but he started that rumor and he encouraged their artisans to lie about it so that that word would spread around and people were like oh my god like gucci is such a like high-end rich store like let's go buy from there that that's not true like i think even if you see some of their current products that little thing there's like a little symbol that has to do with horseback riding and like that rich people hobby and so that actually never happened that was a rumor that was started by him just so he could like gain more attention and it worked i'm not gonna lie there were a lot of people seen shopping at gucci stores princess uh princess elizabeth at the time so she's now deceased queen elizabeth when she was pr princess she was seen shopping there i think jacqueline kennedy uh, eleanor roosevelt and i think aubrey hepburn but i'm not sure but i do think she was there but there were a lot of people seen shopping at gucci stores and it was very very well known this is when they start expanding in the United States so at first Guccio was really not having it he was kind of like I don't really know the Americans don't really have class and so Aldo was like no 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 like we have to expand in the United States that is where the market is good uh, and so many rich people are there so we have to do it I'm not taking no for an answer so he went to a bank got money and he opened his shop in New York City he didn't like it at first Gucci was not really like fond of this idea so he wasn't really there when it was under construction Aldo was there he was really managing everything but this is the kind of situation where you get a dog that your dad didn't want and then when you actually get it and he's like all over it yeah this is that situation Gucci went to New York City saw the shop and he was like oh my god I love this like I'm in love with it I'm sure he didn't say it like that but he was he loved it so much that he started telling people that it was his idea like he completely cut Aldo out of like the yeah he's my son and I'm so proud of him because he made this like expansion idea he was like nope it was my idea. I don't know what you're talking about. Who's Aldo? I don't know Aldo. And so this is then where Guccio's story ends. I guess it's karma for lying about whose idea it was, but who knows. A week after the ribbon cutting for the shop that was in New York City, he dies at 72. The doctors said in a lot of the reports it was just like his heart stopped beating. And 72 is, I guess, not a bad age to die. You know, I feel like you're old enough. But this was two weeks 10 days oh, I think maybe a little bit over two weeks like around 15 days after the NYC store opening and this 
is when the bomb dropped his death oh my god it sparks so much drama so much happens and it's it's crazy that is where i leave you next episode's about to get real really interesting because his well his, his well his will and his death stir up some shit really really quickly so it's gonna be really interesting and i'm really excited to film that part i'll see you guys then please stay safe um don't go murdering anybody and i will see you next week bye